I was so in inspired listening to Gendermark and I, th I think, you know, we must acknowledge companies like these uh, in our country and, and I really want to, you know, it's not always just doom and gloom and I, and I also want, just want to share with you some success stories that you had in the, in the past few years. I just first need to ask you, do we have sensitive people here for blood theatre pictures? you know please just show by hand if you are I, I, I'm gonna try to give you a warning um, it's actually you know th this is the reality of life so so we are dealing with with patients that's disfigured uh, cancer tumors things like that but I will try to keep it to a minimum so thank you very much and thank you to the NSTF for um, organizing this event and also for inviting us so I think I'm going to quickly run through, you know, just the, the global picture. Uh, if you have a look at Wooler's Associates um, report on the, yeah, on the past five years, we, we've seen a big uh, growth, 875% in metal additive manufacturing and just the past two years. And, and you hear about these success stories of GE and, and big companies that's producing parts that's flying and going into humans and, and, and things like that. Boeing reported that they have 20 sites producing metal parts and that there are over 60,000 additive manufactured 3D printed parts currently uh, deployed in their aircraft. You know, uh, you maybe know that GE also <coughs> acquired two uh, 3D printing companies uh, or machine manufacturers uh, from from yeah one from uh, Arkham and the other one is actually uh, yes Concept Laser and they have over 1,200 employees operating 1,300 machines uh, resulting in in 50,000 parts to date. I think GE wants to push out around 1,000 additive manufactured machines and that's the goal in a, in a year. Um, that's quite you know, if you have a look at the biggest supplier now on metal side is uh, one of the biggest is the EOS and they are supplying around 350 of these machines per year. I think, yeah, over 1,000 ongoing metal additive manufacturers are directed uh, what GE believes uh, to be a, a 76 billion market uh, opportunity in the next eight years. And then Striker also uh, put up a state-of-the-art facility to address growing opportunities in the medical industry. They are very nice videos and please go and have a look at what Striker is and, and the big players are actually doing in this field. This is maybe too small to see there from the back but currently in, in 2018 this additive manufacturing market was estimated as uh, 9.3 billion um, market and the growth in 2018 was already 18 percent. What's no, what is something important to note um, is actually it will double every four years uh, if you have a look uh, you know at, at this Smartec uh, publishing report. You will find more of more, more and more of these places like Siemens invested in Wooster um, actually state-of-the-art uh, 3D printing factory and and this is how they believe the factory of the future. Again, I'm all for the combination between conventional manufacturing and 3D printing. Please, you know, it's not just one or the other. You will, f you will actually see some applications that can only be additive manufactured where others are really suited for, for the conventional manufacturing. In South Africa, we stop counting now, it's very difficult um, because on, on these desktop systems that you can buy from Amazon and, and import, importing directly, we don't know where it is. I, uh, we estimate uh, like in 2017 there was 5,600 machines. This is courtesy of uh, Prof. Tion de Beer and some other colleagues that tried to, to put a, you know, a, a amount of machines you, uh, even an estimate, but you will see the red line here at the bottom. That that are high, high end systems above five thousand um, dollars. That's actually in the country. 
So just something small about our center. Uh, the CRPM is part of the Central University of Technology. And we currently produce around 15,000 additive manufactured parts, to, uh, around 500 projects. Some of them are research, some of them are uh, for industry, industry uh, projects and currently some of the um, clients that we are serving. We hope to add gender marketing in, in the quite uh, near future. <laughs> the process starts with powder. You have a machine. Uh, so you will start with your, with your cat, then that is sliced layer by layer. And each layer is then actually fed into the machine. And then you will see a laser from the top and uh, it melts. It's melting it layer by layer. And that, the layer thickness is important, so we are producing around 30 micron, 50 micron layers on the metal parts. There's also a fine balance between going too fine, okay, because then people won't pay, because it will be actually too expensive, the parts. So we, like in this case, you, you know you will need to do post-machining on that uh, tool insert. So then it's good to run at 50 micron and get it a good quality um, dense parts. Just on the machine side, uh, metal systems. A machine like this is uh, currently around maybe between 560, uh, 500 to around 650,000 euros at this stage uh, for a metal system. And then I asked myself the question, but why additive manufacturing for medical applications? Why is it important? Uh, what? And, and we're talking about this digital environment and designing. And, and I, I believe that uh, for additive manufacturing, if, if you can have a customized implant that can really fit into the patient, it's not a generic one that they need to bend in theater and uh, you can actually reduce a theater time. Uh, you can definitely reduce a theater time and in, in that have uh, the effect of faster pa patient recovery time. Customization of medical devices, if you have a look at Deloitte. And, and then you will find these big companies now investing also to manufacture. It's not just once off anymore. Uh, it's really to, to manufacture a large, uh, you, you know, large production runs. And I think a big opportunity for us, and Ilza maybe mentioned that, is 95% of our medical devices are currently imported um, in our country. Uh, we did a study also, now we have a collaborative project with Botswana, um, and it's even worse on that side. You know, there are no manufacturing done locally. Um, this gentleman lost his mid face and, uh, due to cancer. It's an old slide, and, and but I think it shows the impact of, of the work that you can do. Uh, we actually did a, a 3D scan of his face before the operation uh, and then a week after the operation to, to digitally design for him to correct his misformed nose and then digitally design. That was done by art students. Um, this clip on the slip on face, if I could say it like that. And the gentleman at the bottom is actually the first 3D printed design and manufactured uh, mandible that was done in 2012. No, let me just think. It was 2013. That was actually. So I could show you many examples. Big, uh, uh, big uh, tumors. You will, you can just see that the left bottom side. That was a lady that we operated on uh, around a month ago. And uh, I'll, I'll, I just want to share with you two, two stories. The first story is actually about this lady. She was 22 years old. She was hijacked in Johannesburg. They actually just pulled the, the gun to her face and they shot her. So they didn't give her a chance to actually get away or out of the car. So what we ended up was that the whole area was shot away. So she's, she's a state patient. Um, I actually went to one of our machine manufacturers, uh, you know, EOS. I asked them, don't they just want to sponsor uh, from a CSI perspective uh, that we can reconstruct? And because she was at that stage, she was pregnant um, and she didn't know that. So at, at least they could save, uh, you know, both mother and, and the unborn. 
Um, we constructed the, the pink area um, also with sculpting and things like that and ended up to, to 3D print that titanium frame that was implanted with her own bone um, and then left like three months. So this was a three year process because you, you can't uh, uh, put in the frame, put in the bone, expose that, put in the dental implants, all of that needs to be done over many months. So that was the first follow-up. Uh, that was the first operation, actually uh, just after the operation where we, where we put in uh, the frame with, the, with, the, um, with her own bone. So I was in through this changing faces, changing lives. And I'm glad that um, colleagues from the DSI is also sitting here because, you know, through many partners, they are really touching lives of South African people. You, uh, I'm not going to go into all the partners, and please, you are all acknowledged. You will see the Carl Emily Fuchs Foundation is also one. Uh, so we started off from the left side and then ended up here at the right. So also another case that I would like to show you, uh, we are in this digital environment and, you know, guided surgery and robots and all of that. But what do you do if you are in a small hospital, in a clinic, um, hospital that I do have a theater, no ICU beds, um, limited, you don't have, uh, you don't have access to, to guided surgery. And the doctors only give you two weeks before the child will lose her eyesight. So th that's actually a case that we did last year. Um, it, this uh, girl had an eidetic cyst behind the eye. And also they gave two weeks before that cyst will, will actually push out the eye and then the nerves will be, will be damaged. And we had to come up with a solution and this is now also 3D printed. So all of this was from a CT scan, it was converted, the whole mask was designed. But what is very important is, remember your soft tissue can move around. So, so to get anchor points, that was very important. That's because if you're half a millimeter out and they go in with the needle, so I'm not gonna play you that, so don't worry. Uh, I do have the video, but um, actually you could see how we plan. Uh, the green is the cyst and how do we, um, and then that was to, to anchor uh, the, the mask and from there, before they went in, uh, there was actually x-rays taken um, to see if it aligns properly and how deep they can go in. So x-ray facilities, that was, was available. And you can see the small scar uh, where they actually went in. And this is the goal the day after. So you can use like additive manufacturing with digital with all of this and and just think of <clears throat> you know um just the impact of her life in her life so so it's maybe a five thousand rand device but i think for her to keep her eyesight is m more than that